shout out and give it up for our production team. Without them, you would not be seeing this today. So wherever you are, just thank God so much for these wonderful people that are giving up their time today to come and make this available with you. Thank you so much, guys and girls. We really appreciate it. Appreciate all the band and the, uh, the great singing today. And we're just so glad that you are here. A little bit different today, and uh, but we're going to make the best of it. And, and I know that wherever we are, Jesus said that if two or three are gathered together in his name, he's right there in the midst. So, so wherever you are, there are people gathered all over the world, just like you are right now in your home, and, and they're in their cars, and, 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 and just wherever they are, Jesus is right there to minister. And the church, of course, is not a building. The church is people. And again, we are so glad that you are here today. God bless you. Uh, maybe you're joining with us for the very first time this morning. Uh, we're so glad that you decided to tune in. And uh, we would like to have a record of you today. We'd like to know who you are and be able to touch you and, and uh, be able to minister to you. So if you'll do something for me at some time during the day, maybe during the service or later on, if you'll just go to edcc.us slash my profile and fill that out, we'll be able to have a record of you and we'll be able to pray over you and believe God for great things in, in your life. So if you'll do that sometime, and even if you're a regular attender of the Edge, we would appreciate you going there. Again, that's edgecc.us slash my profile and filling that out and giving us some updated information. Because with a lot of you, we don't have a phone number, we don't have an email address, and so there's no way that we can really get in touch with you and let you know what's going on and just keep track of you and help you during this, uh, during this particular time. What I want to do right now is something that we do every single week, and, and that is receive our tithes and offerings. It is a little bit different today, but, but if you're giving, of course you can give by check, and if you're giving by check, please send that to 506 Edwards Road, Greenville, South Carolina, 29615, the Edge Community Church, and we will, uh, we will receive that. Or you can give online. It's so easy to give by push pay. You can just go to edcc.us slash give and uh, you'll be able to uh, to give your tithes and offerings and thank you for your generosity especially during this particular time it is real meaningful to us because things still go on just like it does with you and I'll be uh, talking all about that today but I want to pray over your offerings this is such a critical time and I believe I believe there's there's so many people that are involved in fear but more than any other time we need to walk in faith Believe God that He will do just exactly what His Word says that He will do. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in terror. We can live in faith knowing that God will do exactly what He says. So let me pray over your, your tithes and offerings and over your generosity this morning. And then I believe I've got a great message that God has given me for today. Father, I pray over every person that is watching today, wherever they are, Sir, the north, the south, the east, and the west, men and women, boys and girls, teenagers, tuning in by phone, on their computer, on their iPads, on their televisions. And sir, I thank you that they're surrounded with faith and love today, and as they give, sir, your word promises that you'll give back to them good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So we receive these gifts in the name of Jesus. Father, I know that you do, will do what you say you will do. You will prosper them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, things are a little bit different today, but I'm so glad that you tuned into this live stream. And, and let me encourage you to share this on your social media page. Uh, it is just amazing the exponential number of people that will watch if you will share this on your social media page. And, and although things are a little bit different, I want to try to keep things as normal as possible. And so I am starting a brand new series today that's going to take us up to, to Easter. And Easter's only three weeks away. Can you believe that? And, uh, of course, for every church, traditionally, Easter has always been the, uh, the largest service of the year. It is the Super Bowl. And, and who knows what's going to be uh, taking place on Easter. Uh, ideally, everything will be back to normal or at least semi-normal uh, uh, on Easter. And we can come together and worship the Lord. So, uh, so let me encourage you to please start inviting your friends and your family and your, your co-workers and and I think especially during this time of great crisis, people are looking for hope. 
They're looking for you to invite them and offer them some kind of hope. And the theme for Easter this year is called Upside Down. I tell you, the Lord knew just exactly what He was doing when He gave us that theme, so I think it's going to be very relevant. And uh, Robin's got an incredible painting that she's going to be doing, and uh, the band has got some great music, and, and we're still planning two worship services at 9 and 11, and because of those two services and because of all the extra guests that we're going to be having, I've been encouraging you every single Sunday to make yourself available to serve one service and come to one service, and especially over in the children's area, and who knows, I mean, whether your act of service would enable someone to come and feel comfortable leaving their kids and then receive uh, receive the gospel. So again, thank you for your faithfulness. And, and I know um, as things get closer, we'll keep you informed on our website and on our Facebook pages. And again, if we don't have any updated information on you, go to that edgecc.us slash my profile and fill it out. And that way we can have some uh, some updated information. And they'll, they'll be putting that link up on the screen periodically over the day. You know, I've often told you that at the beginning of each year, I, I ask the Lord to give me a word for the coming year. And uh, this is something that I try to focus on every single day. And I've done this for really over a decade. And I've had many words over the years. Health and growth and peace and leadership and care. And one year it was transition. One year it was miracles. But this year, the Lord gave me a very specific word. And I, and I was almost getting up to the new year and didn't know what it was. And then just it just kind of dropped in my heart as I was praying one day. But this year, my word is intentional. The word intentional means deliberate, planned, calculated, purposeful. And I really like that. And this year I'm trying to be intentional in everything that I do, but especially be intentional as a husband, father, grandfather, friend, and pastor. And I believe that as I am intentional, I will fulfill that call that God's placed upon my life. And so the title of this short series is simply Get Ready. And today I want to talk to you about intentionally getting ready and intentionally being good to other people. I mean, now it, I believe it's more important than any other time that I can remember. And see, most of us, you know, we've got relatively a small circle of people that we're close to. You know, there's our, uh, there's our immediate family and they, we've got a few friends. And these are the people that we spend our time with. That we allow to speak into our lives. These are the people that we pray for. These are the people that pray for us. These are the people that we do things for. And they take up our time and our energy and our material resources, and that's okay. Because we love them and they love us. But I have found that it's so easy, especially during times of stress like right now, to become very inwardly focused on our little group and we can just forget about anybody else. And so let me ask you a question, and this is really the bottom line. And so think about this in case that you have to get up and get distracted or maybe you have to change a diaper or give somebody a snack or, or put somebody in time out. But here's, here's the bottom line. Is there any time in your life for other people? Is there any time in your life for other people. Or are you like the old saying, Lord, bless me, my wife, my son, John, his wife, us four, and no more. You know, I think that whatever we do, but especially during this time of international crisis, even if we're staying at home, you know, we should be on the lookout for ways and opportunities to be a blessing to others. And you know, it doesn't have to be something big. It can be something like, like bringing somebody a cup of coffee. This past Tuesday, I went to the gym very early and then got in the office really early. And, and Josh, our student minister, was already here. And, and uh, he knocked on my door and said, somebody's going to make a Starbucks run. Would you like a cup of coffee? Or maybe it's running an errand for someone that can't get out. Or maybe you're in the grocery store and you see the last package of toilet paper and you say, no, I've got some toilet paper at home. I'm not going to take that. You know, it's the little things that matter. Maybe letting a car go ahead of you in the parking lot, or maybe giving somebody a kind word or word of encouragement, or, or just praying over someone temporarily out of work. Now, you don't have to do this. You're still going to go to heaven if you never do anything like this at all, but, but I'm talking about being intentional today. 
being intentional to help and bless and, and just be good to other people. Listen to what the scripture says about Jesus. This is Acts chapter 10, verse 38. This is out of the New Living Translation. It says, And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Now watch this. Then Jesus went around doing good. Jesus went around doing good. The word good there means to be a benefactor. It means someone who does acts of kindness or someone who helps or blesses others. And that's what Jesus did. And you know, if we are a Christian, that's, we're, that's what we're called to be. We're called to be just like Him. And this is something that everybody can do. You know, a lot of people are, are terrified of having to stand up in front of a group and talk to them. A lot of people can't imagine selling everything they have and moving to a foreign country and becoming a missionary. Not everybody can drive one of those big truck rigs. But every single person, no matter who you are, no matter how old you are, man or woman, boy or girl, can be kind. And when we're kind, when we do something good like Jesus, you know, I think that's the best witness that we could possibly have. God spoke to Abraham in the Old Testament. He said, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to make you a blessing. You know, most of us really like the bless me part. And we are, we're intentional about being blessed. We think about it. We talk about it. We take action to make it happen. But, but are we as intentional about blessing others as we are receiving that blessing for ourselves? I mean, are we as conscious every day to be able to do something good for someone else? And, you know, it doesn't have to be a special occasion. It doesn't have to be Christmas or a birthday or any kind of holiday. We can just do something good. You say, Brad, well, well, like what? Well, you know, a lot of people are getting takeout food. A lot of people are getting delivery food right now. Maybe you give a, a few extra dollars to the person that, that delivers your food or anybody in the service industry, especially in these uncertain times. And, of course, you can't do good for everybody. Nobody can. But you can do good for the person that God puts you in your path. There's an amazing scripture in the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 10, and this is out of the voice translation. It says, so seize any opportunity the Lord gives you to do good things and be a blessing to everyone. Let me read that again. So seize any opportunity, any opportunity, any opportunity the Lord gives you to do good things and be a blessing to everyone. You say, well, Brad, I just don't have a lot of extra money. I mean, this coronavirus has thrown everything in a tailspin. I'm down on my income. Or, or maybe you've lost your job. Yes, we live in uncertain times. And perhaps you're struggling. Perhaps you've been really hit hard. But you don't have to spend money to do something good. I mean, even if you're working from home, you can help a coworker finish their project. You could clean the kitchen for your spouse. When you're in the grocery store, you could sanitize more than just your grocery cart. Just saw here this past week where a friend of mine mowed somebody else's lawn. You can hold the door open for somebody with their hands full. You can take time to send a text or, or make a phone call and just give someone a word of encouragement. Let me read Galatians 6.10 again. This is out of the voice. It says, so seize any opportunity the Lord gives you to do good things and be a blessing to everyone. A friend of mine told me a story about a man and his son who were in line at a, at a particular children's movie premiere. This was a, the opening of a very, very popular film that had been much anticipated. And so there was a, there was a large line. And right in front of this particular man and his son was a husband and wife, and they had six kids with them, and all of them looked to be about under 12, and they were well-behaved, they were clean-cut. But the man, you know, he knew they must not have had a lot of money because of what they were wearing. And, and, but they were really excited about being able to get in and see this movie. And so when their time came to the window, the man proudly said, Two adults and, uh, and six children. Well, the children's tickets were ten fifty apiece. And the adult tickets were $13.50 apiece. And of course, there was tax on that. And when the, uh, the person at the, at the counter said $90, the lady dropped her head. And the husband leaned in and said, said, how much? 
attendant told him not be dollars. Well, the man didn't know what to say. Obviously, he didn't. He didn't have enough money. Well, my friend, he uh, he pulled forty dollars out of his pocket and dropped it on the ground and then picked it up and said, "Excuse me, sir. This money must have fallen out of your pocket." Well, the husband knew just exactly what happened, and then he looked at the man and in a shaky voice he said, "Thank you, sir." from the bottom of my heart. You know, real joy comes in not what we can get, but in what we can give. It's not how much we're blessed, but how much we can bless others. And we were not created just to focus on us. We were created to focus on others. The Living Bible says in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17, your own soul is nourished when you are kind. Your own soul, you, you're nourished, you're built up, you're fed when you're kind. When you do something good for somebody else, when you're kind, yes, you're helping yourself, or yes, you're helping them, but you're also helping yourself. You're nourishing your soul. Paul says something very interesting in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. He says, you people are leaders in so many ways. You have so much faith, so many good preachers, so much learning, so much enthusiasm, so much love for us. This, He says, now I want you to be leaders also in the spirit of cheerful giving. Now, you know, he could have told them he wanted them to be leaders in, every, in anything. Be leaders in business or sports or academics or, or, or medicine and all that's good. But he said, I want you to be a leader. In cheerful giving. And you know, it just thrills me, thrills me to be able to say that generosity is one of the core values that the Edge was founded on. And we are a generous church. Yesterday was an incredible day of generosity for the Edge. Hog for Heroes barbecue yesterday happened because of the cheerful generosity of the Edge Bikers for Christ. And these men and women, they, they love veterans, they love first responders, they love our church, and they're leaders in the spirit of generosity. And they purchase food, then they had to go back and purchase all these to-go boxes because things were, were totally different than they first expected, and then they had to cook all this food, and, and they served up over 200 delicious barbecue plates. And these went to veterans, and, and, and first responders like firemen and EMS and policemen. And so we thank all of you. Thank you, bikers for Christ, that have a heart, a heart like Jesus, to be generous and touch the lives of other people. And thank all of you edgers that came out and helped and, and supported. And then also yesterday at the Greer Soup Kitchen, edgers, you, you served over 100 meals to adults and children in need. And so thank you to all of you that were intentionally generous with your service. And that's the way that God wants us to be. I mean, He wants us to be a leader in generosity. And of course, listen, generosity is so much more than money. Of course, yes, it's giving financially, and we all should that, do that, and, and I really believe. Now listen, I really believe that during times of crisis, during time, hard times, I believe it's more important to sow seed than in any other time in your life. But generosity... Doing good things is so much more than being uh, doing something financially. It's just being a blessing to people however you can. And you know, when you come to the end of your life and people are talking about you, don't you want them to say that you were a blessing? Don't you want them to say that he or she made me better? He or she brightened my day? Someone said one time that if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a month, win the lottery. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, be good to other people. And think about the people that God brings across your path. You know, you just might be the miracle that they're praying for. Of course, that man that gave that other man $40, he was a miracle to that family in need. You know, some of you have miracles in your closet, miracles in your garage. You know, those outfits that you haven't worn in years and you're not going to wear. They could be a miracle to someone else. You could be the answer to someone's prayers. You say, well, Brad, I'm not going to give away a perfect, a good outfit. I paid $49.95 for that outfit, and all I have to do is lose 40 pounds, and I can wear it again. So during this time of need, we need to be overly generous. 
And let me just tell you a secret. You may not know this, but you can't ever outgive God. Something I quoted earlier. This is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. It says, Give and you will receive. Give and you will receive. Your gift, your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount that you get back. So when you do good, when you meet the need of someone else, you become an answer to prayer. And God will make sure that you get paid back. Your gift of kindness and generosity, it will come back to you. A number of years ago, I heard about a man that was just going on a hike, and, and he had his canteen with him, but it was a really hot summer day, and he was right in the middle of the woods, and you know, he drank all of his water, and suddenly he came upon a house right out in the middle of the woods, and he was really thirsty. He had drank all of his water, and he saw that this house had a well, but he didn't want to go up and, and just get water out of the well. Somebody might think he was a thief and shoot him, and so he was was brave enough to go knock on the door, and a young lady came to the door, and he said, uh, you know, I, I'm just out hiking. Could, could I have a drink of water from your well? And she said, well, absolutely, you certainly can, but, but if you'd like, I'd give you a glass of cold milk and some fresh peach cobbler. And so she brought in the milk and the peach cobbler, and they sat out on the porch, and he ate it and was on his way and filled up his canteen. Years later, that young lady became very ill. And the local doctor could not diagnose her condition, and so she was sent to John Hopkins Medical Center. And they were able to diagnose her condition and help her on the road to recovery. But the hospital bill and the doctor bill was really high. In fact, it was so high that she knew that she would never be able to pay it off in her entire lifetime. But one of the chief physicians at John Hopkins was Dr. Howard Kelly. And when he saw this young lady, he immediately knew that she was the lady that gave him the milk and the peach cobbler on that hot summer day. And so he had the bill sent to his office, and he wrote on it, paid in full with a glass of milk and a bowl of cobbler. You know, when you're good to people in time of need, God will make sure that someone's good to you. In your time of need, your gift is going to come back to you. And you've got to look at your whole life as sowing and reaping every single opportunity you have. Do good to someone else. And you don't have to know why God brought them across your path. You don't, you don't, you don't have to know why or what the situation is. But I tell you, it's not a coincidence. I am beginning to believe more and more that every encounter we have was strategically aligned by our God so we can show His goodness. You know, even in the midst of this coronavirus time, you know, when the enemy meant something for evil and destruction, listen, our God can turn things for good. His Word says, we know, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 28, we know that all things, all things, all things, does all mean all, does all mean some? All things work together for our good when we love the Lord and walk in His path. All things. Now that doesn't mean that all things are good, but God can work them out good for us. So do your part. I mean, seize this opportunity. And again, it doesn't have to cost you anything financially. You can go pick up groceries for somebody. You can open the door. You can leave big tip. You can give somebody a glass of cold milk. Give them a piece of a, a peach cobbler. You say, well, Brad, I've got my own challenges. I've got health issues. I'm struggling in my finances. And I didn't, I didn't tune in today to hear about being good to somebody else. I'm scared of this virus, and I need someone to be good to me. Well, I know some of you are scared. I know that. I know that some of you, you've lost so much. You've lost income. Some of you think, I've lost the whole year. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? Listen, my job... My job is to encourage you to not just look at everything that's going around. Look beyond the now. Listen, I want to speak to you in Jesus' name. This year is not lost. The Scripture says that God restores double to those who suffer loss. So change your thinking. Change your paradigm. And look at the goodness and the kindness that you share. Look at that like sowing seed. And when you sow seed, you're going to get a harvest. But no one gets a harvest unless they sow seed. And we're going to make it through this. We'll make it through together. 
Psalm 37, verse 3, says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you'll live safely in the land and prosper. And I think most of us, we want that trust far. We want it to just read, trust in the Lord and you'll live safely in, in the land and prosper. You know, we've got our scriptures and we're, 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 we're quoting and we're thinking. And, and you know, we're trusting in the Lord because it has to do with us. But it doesn't just stop there. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. That good you do is seed that God can cause you to reap a harvest. You know, what you can do is you could, you could walk across the street. Just check on your neighbor. My wife, Robin, yesterday evening, she, uh, she got all inspired because of the different things that the Edge was doing yesterday, and she printed up a bunch of little cards. Said, I'm your neighbor. And if there's anything that I can do to help you during this time, if I can run an errand, go get groceries. And then she put her name and her telephone number and her email on there, and she walked down our street, put one on every single mailbox. Well, that didn't cost her any money. I mean, you can do something like that, or you can pick up the phone and just call somebody. Hardly anybody makes phone calls anymore. Everything's a text or everything's an email. Nothing wrong with that. Or you could email somebody or text somebody and just let them know that you're thinking about them. And when God sees that you're not only trusting Him for yourself, but you're doing good for others, that's when you'll live in safety in the land. And that's when you prosper. You know, every single one of you that's listening and watching me today, you've, you've heard of Pay It Forward. You know, that was a movement that was really kind of started a few years ago, and really it, it, it took our country by storm. And there's so many wonderful stories. There's websites about it. It's just fascinating. But one lady, she wrote about where she owned the coffee shop. And she tells about a person that, that came to the drive-thru, ordered coffee, and, and this particular lady, she ordered her coffee, and when she got up there, she said, I want to pay for mine, but I want to pay for the person behind me too. And that person was a complete stranger and she paid for them and went on her way and when that person got up there they, they told well your coffee was paid for and they said well you know we'll, we'll pay for the person behind us and it went on and it went on and went on and, and people were pleasantly surprised. Went on for over two hours. Over 80 customers did that same thing. Listen being good to others doing something kind is contagious. When you go out of your way to show kindness to someone, you start a chain reaction. And so what would happen? What would happen if, 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 if everyone started doing something good for at least one person every single day? What would happen in this city? I'll tell you what would happen. It would be a contagious reaction. It would spread faster than the coronavirus. You know, the name of this series is Get Ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And it's all about being intentional. And so let me ask you again. Are you intentionally being good and kind to someone else? It's so easy. And I know I'm right there with you. My family's right there with you. But it's so easy to get, get busy with our own schedule and our problems and our family that we don't have any time for anybody else. But of course, we can't do good for everybody. But is there any time in your life for someone else? I mean, what if intentionally you made time in your life to just be good to one person? What if intentionally you decided every single day, I'm going to do something kind to somebody else? Let me read this scripture in Galatians again. This is the voice translation. It says, so seize any opportunity the Lord gives you to do good things and be a blessing to everyone. Now that's written to you and me as a child of Jesus. We are New Testament believers. It's written directly to us. And so I'm asking you to be intentional in serving others. And you can start with the people that you missed at church today. You know, it'll take a little time, yeah. But so many of you are at home anyway. Why don't you intentionally send somebody a text or send them an email? Make a phone call and just say, hey, I really missed you today. I miss being with you. I love you. Just want you to know I'm praying for you. You know... 
the early church confounded the people of their generation. Sometimes it was in a good way, sometimes it was in a bad way. In Acts chapter 17, verse 6, this is really kind of a bad way, but I'm going to turn it good. It says, those who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Well, I'd like for our cities... The greater Greenville metropolitan area. What if people that didn't know the Lord begin to say, those Christians, they have turned the world upside down and they're right here in our city. Not because we've done something bad, but because we've done something good. Now, here are some questions that I want you to discuss as a family. Think about them. Talk about them. You can email others. You can text others. What do you think about this? But here's the first one. I want you to talk about an act of kindness that you've been shown in the past. How did that make you feel? Did it make you feel good? Did it make you feel bad? How did it make you feel? And also, next, talk about an act of kindness that you have shown someone else in the past. How did that make you feel? Question number three. How could you intentionally show kindness to someone during this uncertain time? You know, there are many people that have lost their job. My, one of my sons and his wife, they both lost their jobs during this time. So there are many people that are in difficult situations. How can you intentionally do something to help? And then the last question, who specifically, who specifically will you pray for and how can you let them know that your prayers are covering them? Now, maybe you're watching today and maybe all this is new to you. Maybe you've never been in church. Maybe you just kind of tuned in accidentally or a member of your family was watching and you're watching with them. Or, or maybe you've been in church all your life, but you've never really had a relationship with Jesus. You know, the Scripture says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means you. That means me. That means every single person. We've sinned. And we may not think that we're too bad, but how many lies does it take to make somebody a liar? just one. And if Jesus was right here, right now, how would you match up to Him? Well, we know that none of us could match up to Him. The Scripture also says that the wages of sin is death. Now that word death there doesn't mean to die and go in the grave. It means separation. The wages of that one life, nothing else. That means that we would be separated from God. But the Scripture also says the gift of God is eternal life. But it's through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And in the book of Revelation, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in. And the door he's talking about is your life. Have you ever done that? Have you ever actually opened your life? Can you think of a time in your life when you stop in the course of your life? And you said, Jesus, come in. Take control. Right now, it's so amazing that nobody is in control. We're out of control. You need to let Jesus be in control. If there's never been a time in your life, it's so simple. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I know that I've told that one lie. I know that I'm guilty before you. So I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and make me a new creature. And when you do... You pass from death to life, and you will, beyond a shadow of a doubt, go to heaven because you have become a child of God. I want to do two more things, and then we'll be done today. I want to read my favorite psalm to you. This is Psalm 91. I've taught it. I've quoted it. Quoted it over my kids so many years. This is out of the New King James Version. Let it be a blessing to you. Let it create hope in your heart. It says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings. You shall take refuge. His truth 
will be your shield and buckler. Now listen, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the air that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. You know, the coronavirus is a pestilence nor for the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Listen, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all their ways. In their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread on the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. Honor him. Listen, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Have hope. Have faith. None of this took our God by surprise. He knows the very number of hairs on your head. If he knows that, he'll take care of you. I'm going to pray for you now. If you're with someone, I'd like for you to join hands in your living room or if you're in the car, join the hands of someone next to you and Robin's going to come and join hands with me. Just get your family around you. We want to pray over you today. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for the privilege of being able to gather together. We thank you that we can put our faith and our trust in you, that we don't have to be afraid. We know that none of this took you by surprise, and you have our back in this. And I surround every person that's watching today, every person that's listening with faith, with love. And Father, I thank you that that hedge of protection is around them. Surrounding them, their family, their children, their aunts, their uncles, their brothers and sisters. Father, let them hold their head up high. And in these times, let them do good. And then we'll live in safety in the land and prosper. Father, I pray for those that have lost jobs during this temporary setback. Just ask you to prosper them and bless them and let them use their finances wisely. Those that have been so blessed financially and have been wise, during this time let them be more generous than ever before. Father, I pray for all of our church family, every single one of them. I thank you so much for them. We love them so much. And Father, just let us be able to help them in every single way that we can. I thank you that all of our finances will be met. You'll take care of us. Never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, please fill out the edge cc.us slash my profile. That'll help us have a record of you. And again, if you're giving, please be generous. The edge cc.us slash give. We appreciate your generosity, your love gifts. God bless you. And I don't know about next week, but probably just like it is now. But thank you so much for tuning in. And if there's anything at all that we can do, let us know. God bless you. We love every one of you.